up everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's Chase here, and I just want to say there has been an awakening in the X-Men universe. Things are getting woke and Mystique is putting Professor X in his place where he belongs. Okay, let's, let's just, there's a clip of it, let's just roll that clip. It's funny, I can't actually remember the last time you were the one risking something. And by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You might want to think about changing the name to X Women. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, I really hope this is not indicative of the underlying tone of this movie. I uh, I really hope not. I I would hate to see this movie get feminazi. And, and it could be very easy to do. I mean, we're talking about Jean Grey and her becoming the Phoenix. It's, mm, it's, it's very tempting. I could see it. It's very tempting. And first off, I don't know where Mystique's getting off on this whole women are always saving the men, okay? I mean, I can think of a few examples. Like, I don't know, when Magneto in first class kind of stopped all those missiles from raining down on them. He like, just sent him back into the atmosphere. Or when Quicksilver, okay? When he ran through the mansion as it was exploding and saved all the kids inside. Or when Logan in Days of Future Past, when he went back in time to basically change the future and to stop, to stop Mystique from doing something stupid that was going to cause the apocalypse and the end of the world. Yeah, Mystique. Look in the mirror. Now I get it, Mystique. There are mistakes in my life that I wish I could just forget. But we, we can't forget. The big deal here is the Phoenix Saga is one of the, it is the most important storyline of the X-Men universe, in X-Men canon. When Chris Claremont wrote it, it was huge. It was a culmination of so many things, of Jean Grey, of Cyclops and Jean Grey, of Logan and Jean Grey, and a lot of the other X-Men. And when it came out in the animated series, I was there. I was a kid. I saw it as it played out on television. I didn't go back and rewatch it. I literally saw it as it came out on TV and it was an amazing experience obviously because I still remember it to this day as it happened okay this story literally writes itself actually it's already written all you have to do is literally just follow it and let it tell itself because it's an incredible story and it would be a disaster and so heartbreaking to see it just get ruined with political ideology or being preached at or just some uh, you know underlying message of just whatever of sjwism or, or whatever the ilk is out there nobody wants that nobody's asking for it just go back and look at how all of this started okay i'm talking way back to spider-man the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, the first one, okay? That's how it was built. It was built on story and adventure and getting into the superhero world and fantasy. And then along with it came Batman Begins. And that is where the superhero culture and movies was actually taken seriously as it could be a real drama and gritty and dark. I mean, Heath Ledger, he got a posthumous... Academy Award, it was an exciting time and both of those franchises were built in story and adventure, not some preaching ideology or underlying message of orange man bad or, you know, whatever, okay? It was a solid storytelling experience. And then in 2008, Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, followed by Thor, and then Captain America. The MCU began in the superhero 
culture, and in the superhero storytelling style. That's how it began. Why are you deviating from that? You don't need to deviate from that. Just work with what has been working. The MCU has crossed, has made over $20 billion. Because it, just look at it. What, don't, don't start getting preachy. If you want to know what happens when you start getting preachy and start, st start trying to uh, impose your ideology on others, look at Marvel Comics. Just go and look at Marvel Comics. If you even remember, if you even remember that they existed, okay, first off, go look at them. Their sales are abysmal because that is what Marvel Comics are laced with, is preaching this ideology and SJWism and all of that has just crept in there and has destroyed it. There has literally been a whole movement inside comics regarding this very issue. It, it's scary because it looks like that could very well be where the MCU is heading. Now, I know probably for a lot of people, it may not even matter because for a lot of people, Endgame was their Endgame. I know a lot of people who, they're just, I mean, they're not really all that excited for Spider-Man Far From Home. Like, Endgame, it just, it, it capped it off. It was done for them. So you, so you're already fighting that hurdle, okay? And now you want to start throwing in this kind of stuff. Okay. In my recent, in my other video that I did, I talk about how the Russo brothers have pretty much guaranteed that they're, that one of the MCU characters right now is, is gay. It or is going to be gay. Okay. Not that I have a problem with gay characters because there are gay characters in the comics. However, if you are just making somebody gay to make them gay, that's where the problem is. Okay. If you have to ask yourself, am I just doing this to do this? Then don't do it. Just don't do it. Just do what has been working. That's, that's all anybody's asking. Nobody goes to the movies to be preached at. Nobody goes to the movies to come out with some open mind idea, ide ideology that they've learned. Nobody cares about that. There are movies that do that and there's a place for them. Superhero movies aren't it. So anyway, if you like this video, please like it below. If you haven't already, subscribe because there are more videos like this every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and sometimes on the weekends. Anyway, have a great day. Peace out.